Let's read together our text for this morning. Romans 11, verse 6. Romans 11, verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Our text this morning, beloved, is, I believe, the sharpest and clearest statement of grace alone over against works to be found anywhere in the Bible with the possible exception of Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9. But I think this one's clearer, this one's sharper. Our text sets forth as a theological principle and Christian maxim the truth that grace and works are mutually exclusive and totally antithetical when viewed as source or motivation of salvation. If by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. It must be one or the other, grace or works, and definitely not in any way grace and works with respect to the source or divine motivation for our salvation. And by this biblical principle, the confession of every church, the teaching of every minister, and the witness of every Christian ought to be tested. Are they saying that salvation is wholly of grace and not at all of works? Are they saying that every aspect of salvation, every part of it, is wholly of grace and not at all of works? Because if it's of grace, then it's definitely not works. And if it's works, then you may forget about talking about grace. It's salvation by works that you're teaching. You're corrupting the truth. It is either one or the other. Consider then grace, not works. First, the context as we apply verse 6, especially to the previous five verses. And second, the principle as we consider the teaching of our text and how it applies more generally. Grace, not works. The context and the principle. <clears throat> now the first thing we need to do with this text is to ascertain to what the word it refers in verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it's no more of grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So what is it referring to? You may have noticed, if you had your eyes set upon the text before you, that it, in both instances, in verse 6, is in italics. That means it was supplied to make the sense in English. But the italicized it is most definitely, necessarily included. <coughs> included in the verb is it is so the it is really properly and necessarily there so then the question is what was the last reference to grace we have that at the end of the previous verse even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace and if by grace then is it no more of works. So election is first of all of grace, as verse 5 says, and if it's by grace, then it, election, is no more of works. Election is of grace, and emphatically not in any way of works. Now election, as you will know, 
is God's choice of some people in Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world. Election is to grace in this life and glory in the next. Election means that God sent his son to die for you as one of his chosen ones. And God sent his spirit to renew you as one of his chosen ones. So we can quote verse 6, supplying the word election for it. And if by grace then is election no more of works. Otherwise grace, no more grace. But if election be of works, then is it no more of grace. Otherwise work is no more work. Now who is it that teaches that election is of works, or at least partly of works? According to this text, to say something is partly of works means to say it's wholly of works. Who is it that teaches this? Well first, and especially in this context, the Jews. The Jews emphatically believed election by works. And they would say, oh we believe there's grace in there too, but don't you believe it? The principal decisive factor is works. The Jews believed that in Paul's day. They believed that throughout the New Testament age and they believe that today. Throughout the Old Testament days, they believed that too. And here I'm speaking, of course, of the unbelieving Jews. If you would ask one of them, why did God choose the Jews as opposed to any other nation, they would say, and they do say, because we keep the law. We keep the law. God gave us the law. We keep it. We are different. We are better. To try and refine that, to make it look a little bit less crass, they might say, and some do say, God chose us, the Jews, as his peculiar people because God saw that we would keep the law. And to cut through all the nonsense and evasions, they're saying that God chose them because of works. And then the Jew would say, oh, but there's grace too. God was favorable to us. God enabled us to keep the law and do these works, and so he chose us. But that won't wash. If it's of grace, then it's no more works. <coughs> Otherwise, it's not really grace. Grace is no more grace. And if it's of works, and you've said it's of works, even in part, then it's no more grace at all. Otherwise, work is no more work. You're teaching election by works. Earlier the Apostle taught in Romans 9 verse 11, election by grace by pointing to two twins in the womb of their mother and therefore having done neither good work nor bad work and God chose to save one and reprobated the other. For the children being not yet born, Romans 9 verse 11 says, neither having done any good or evil, and so it's totally irrespective of works, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him, the gracious God that calleth. Election is of grace, and in no way it works. Now if election is entirely of grace, and election is according to foreknowledge, as 1 Peter 1 verse 2 teaches, then foreknowledge is entirely of grace too. You see this in the opening verses of Romans 11. Paul says in verse 2, God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. God's foreknowledge of his people. And then in the remainder of verse 2, and verse 3 and verse 4, Paul gives an instance of God foreknowing his people, the 7,000 in the days of Elijah. Then verse 5, he draws this conclusion, Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. 